Welcome to another video from Learn Electrics. In this video, we'll take a very gentle look at power factor, watts and volt amperes. Starting at a nice easy level, we look at what the different terms mean and how they work together in an electrical installation. There are always lots of questions about power factor, and some of them have included things like, how can I calculate power factor and watts? In fact, what is power factor and how does it affect the installation? And why are VA and watts different? I always thought that V times A was watts, and now it isn't. Before we start working out VA and power factor, let's have a look at some basics that will help. In a purely resistive circuit, the current and voltage are exactly in phase with each other. As the voltage crosses the zero line, so does the current, the amps. As the voltage peaks, so does the current. They are synchronous with each other. This means that the maximum amount of power is delivered into the circuit. But in a circuit with reactants, as shown in the bottom graph, the voltage and current are not in phase. Certain components in the circuit will create a reactance, either inductive or capacitive. Motors, welders, generators, fluorescent lighting, transformers, and so on. These reactances make for inefficiencies in the system and cause losses in the circuits. This means that not all the power being put into the system from the supply is being turned into useful energy or work at the point of use, and somebody is paying for that. This is why ZS, for example, is an impedance and not a resistance. It's a live test on an AC circuit that has reactive equipment in the circuits. Everybody knows about the power triangle, power equals voltage times current, and it can be written as watts equals volts times amps, or W equals VA. But not in this video. Here, watts do not equal volts times amps. We are considering circuits with reactants, systems with transformers, motors, coils, lighting, and so on. Volt amperes, or kilovolt amperes, is the apparent power of the circuit. How much voltage and current is being delivered into the circuit from the source? Watts, or kilowatts, is the actual power, the real power or work that the equipment is doing. There will always be losses, and the actual power of the equipment will be less than the apparent power. More goes in than comes out. Power factor is a measure of these losses as a ratio. It tells us how efficient the equipment is. The more efficient the equipment, the higher the power factor. An ideal system with few reactive losses will approach, but not reach, a power factor of 100% or 1. 85 or 90% is typical, and this would be written as 0 0.85 to 0 0.9 as a decimal number. But now we have another triangle to consider. We use it the same way as the Ohm's law and power law triangles, but of course the numbers are completely different. I call this the PF triangle and use it for calculating watts, volt amperes and power factor. The three variations of the formula are shown in the blue box. As a reminder on how these triangles work, to find watts, cover up the W. We now have VA and PF on the same line. If they are on the same line, then they cannot be a divide operation. So it must be multiply. Watts equals VA times PF. To find VA, first cover up VA. And what are we left with? W over PF. And this is a division, one number over another. So VA equals W divided by PF. And lastly, to find PF, the power factor, we cover up PF. Now look at what we're left with. W over VA, a divide calculation again. This means that PF equals W 
divided by VA. A popular way of explaining these different terms is the beer analogy. If we pour ourselves a glass of beer, we will usually get a head of foam on the top. The more reckless that we are in pouring the beer, the more foam that we will get. The more efficiently that we do the job, the more beer that we will have. And beer is what we want. That is what does the important job of quenching the thirst, not the foam. So what have we got? Our full can of beer is the same as VA. This is what we've paid for, an apparently full can of beer. But, because we've not poured it very efficiently, we have a not quite full glass of beer, which we can equate to the watts in an electrical system. This is the actual power, the real power. The actual beer is less than the apparent amount of beer that we thought we had in the can. A full can has gone in, but only seven eighths has come out as beer. The last bit is lost as foam, and this would be our reactive losses in the system. This is the wasted power that we've paid for, but cannot use. Nobody wants a glass full of foam. Only the beer will quench the thirst. So, the more efficiently that we pour the beer, the more beer that we will get. Think of this electrically. The more efficient the equipment, the more watts that we can get to do the work. VA, or KVA, is the power that is going into the system from the electrical source. And W, or KW, is the work that is being done by the equipment, the work output. Because the watts will almost certainly always be smaller than VA, we should size installations and equipment by VA. If the equipment, cabling, etc. can take the VA, then it can take the watts. And don't forget other factors that affect cable choices. Temperature, grouping, insulation, and so on. Here's another scenario for you. And I found this one helps with explaining the cost of the losses to non-technical customers. Four men in a van drive to a building site. Apparently, it looks like there are four workers. But actually, only three men do any work on site. The fourth man is only the driver. He just watches. So, we have four men's wages for three men's work. This is just an example, and of course, it could just as easily be four lady workers. They do an eight-hour day on site. Four men have gone to work, so apparently there are four workers on site. But only three men are actually doing the work. Change the word work to power. How efficient is the team of workers. What is the power factor for the team? And this little angle here will tell us the power factor. Amazing. Let's look. Mathematically, power factor is called cos theta, the funny oval with a line as shown here. Some books will show a different symbol. It matters not. To find the power factor, or cos theta, we divide the length of the adjacent side by the length of the hypotenuse. Most of you will remember this from school days. Let's do this for our team of workers. The adjacent side is three men long, since only three men are actually doing the work. And the hypotenuse is four men long, as we have four men on site, four wages to pay. Adjacent over hypotenuse, three over four, is 0.75. The power factor is 0.75 or 75%. The team of workers is only 75% efficient. And power factor is dimensionless. It does not have amps or millimetres or volts or anything like that. It's just a number on its own that we use in calculations. So, the apparent power is four workers, but the actual power is only three workers. And cos theta will tell us the power factor, how efficient the team is at 75%. Back at the office, the boss wants to know how efficient his team of workers is. The power factor is 0.75 and the number of men in the team is four. This means that the actual work being done by the workman is four multiplied by 0.75, 0.75.
which is three. So, he says, apparently I'm paying for four men, but only actually getting the work done of three men. Let me think about that. We can do an electrical example of this. If an electric motor circuit draws 590 VA from the source and the motor delivers 500 watts of power, find the power factor PF or cos theta. Adjacent over hypotenuse is what we do. So 500 watts divided by 590 VA is 0 0.847. Rounding up, we can call this 0 0.85 or 85% efficiency. I suppose the next question is why we call the hypotenuse volt amperes or VA and then label the adjacent side as W for watts. Especially as we learnt at college that V times A is W, volts times amps is watts. VA, volt amperes, is the apparent power going in from the source. It's the total amount of power being used by the system. In a 100% efficient system, where PF is 1, called unity, then VA does equal W. But most systems are not 100% efficient. There will always be losses and reactances. And because of this, not all the apparent power does useful work. Then we have W for watts, and this shows the actual power. This is a measure of the real work that is being done by the equipment. And then PF, or power factor. This is a number of one or less that shows how efficient the system is. A power factor of one is 100% efficient. A power factor of 0 0.85 is 85% efficient and is more realistic of equipment in use. This comparison chart should help. Pause the video and understand it. If we know any two values of VA, PF or W, then we can always find the third value. When we do any calculations, we must have W and VA in the same orders of magnitude. We will use watts and volt amperes, W or VA, or we will use kilowatts and kilovolt amperes. Look at this example. We have 5000 watts and 6.25 kva we must convert the watts to kilowatts or change the kva into just va before we do the calculation 5000 watts becomes 5 kilowatts or we can make 6.25 kva become 6250 va either way the answer is a power factor of 0 0.8 a lot of equipment especially motors, will show the power factor on the rating plate. The manufacturer will tell you how efficient the motor is. It may be labelled as power factor, PF, cos theta or cos varfi as shown on this ABB plate. With practice, you will easily recognise this. We can finish off with some examples to reinforce what we've talked about. We will show you a question and we suggest that you then pause the video and attempt to answer it before moving on to the next slide which contains the answer. There are three to have a go at and practice is key to learning. Example one is about finding W, the wattage. If a system has an input of 4600 VA and the equipment power factor is 0 0.95, what is the output wattage? Use the PF triangle to find the correct formula by covering up what you want to know and then putting the numbers into the calculation. The question gives you VA and gives you the power factor. You must find the value of W. Pause the video and find the answer. And here is the answer. The triangle tells us that W equals VA times PF. So 4,600 multiplied by 0 0.95 is 4,370. The watts, the work output, is 4,370 watts. And a good check for you is that the watts will always be less than VA.
now find VA with this information. And the electric motor has an output wattage rating of 1840 watts and a PF of 80% or 0 0.8. What is the VA that is being supplied by the source to this circuit? Pause the video and calculate the answer. We know that the wattage is 1840 watts, so VA must be more than this. VA is found by dividing 1840 by 0 0.8 to make the number bigger. Our answer is 2300 VA. And lastly, calculate the power factor if the wattage is 100 watts and the volt amperes is 125 VA. Pause the video, cover up what you want to know and then put the numbers into the calculation. And our answer should be 100 watts divided by 125 VA to give us a power factor of 0 0.8 or 80%. Remember that power factor, PF, is dimensionless and will almost always be less than 1 or less than 100%. There we are. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've added a little more knowledge to your mental toolbox. Thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you'll find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.